Welcome back, everybody, to part two of episode 222. So many twos here. <laughs> We're on the hot tags of the week, so let's start breaking down some different news, rumors, stories, or anything else we'd want to talk about from the world of pro wrestling. And the first thing, let's talk about something positive. Joey Ryan proposed to his girlfriend, Laura James, during a match at Finest City Wrestling. And uh, I thought it was kind of cool. Just something, you know, on the optimistic side of things for us to talk about real quick. We usually talk about, like, deaths and injuries and shit, but hey, somebody get... Uh, a whole proposal thing in the middle of a match, and the funniest part about the whole thing, I thought, was he rolls her up for a win <laughs> afterward, which is just kind of like, oh, I gotta win a match, you know. But what do you guys think about this? Cool way to propose in his... I liked their banter at the end of it, uh, where, he's, where she's like, I'll split the win money with you, and he's like, well, I guess you did it on the ring. <laughs> yeah, I liked it. Had it not ended in him rolling her up like that, I wouldn't have liked it as much, but the fact that they ended it that way, I thought, made it even better. It's a little awkward, considering Joey Ryan's character he's running right now, where he's like a real sleazy dirtbag. I would not really see him settling down with a woman. Hmm. Well, maybe but... she grabbed his junk, and she was the only one that was like impervious to whatever the attacks would be. Oh, that, that, see, that would have been a good way to go about it. That, oh. been a good way. <laughs> but uh, his reasoning was behind this is that they're always so busy being on the road, and they, they barely get good time together, and they have no way really to you know, surprise each other. This was the best way for him to do it. And that's, you know, it's, it's a whole cute story. When, mm -hmm. when you separate it from the story of what's going on in the wrestling world and just look at it as people doing this, it's adorable. Now, uh, Joey Ryan has a big future coming up. He just got signed to Lucha Underground. So he's going to be on TV. He's, he's got his new wife coming. Good for Joey Ryan. Th everything's coming up, Joey. Thank God this wasn't in WWE because everyone would complain that the match ended with a small package. You know who's complaining right now? The Jim, guy Co Jim Cornette. <laughs> Jim Cornette is fucking writhing backwards and forwards, calling it the worst abomination since Lucha Underground. Is he actually? <laughs> like, is he actually? Probably, no, that? probably not, but he probably will. Be. Oh, because I was like, well, if he's actually tweeting something out about, like, this well, thing, when he was or something. When like... he was bitching about Lucha, Lucha Underground recently, he's like, fucking Lucha Underground, the same type of people like that as the same people that like the dick wrestler. <laughs> he, to Joey Ryan. So he, he really doesn't like Joey Ryan. It's you me. know who's not complaining about the small package? Joey's His, wife. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you did there. I feel sorry for the guy who proposed in the empty ring the other day, the other month. Uh, oh yeah, WWE completely blew that. <laughs> they did this whole video special with this guy proposing to his girlfriend. And they just blow it like before anybody else gets to the arena. Meanwhile, you had that guy on Raw a couple of months ago who just proposed to his girlfriend in the middle of John Cena's match. Wait, what and happened? And he even, like, stops the match and points it out to him. You don't remember that? What was it, on Royal Rumble or TLC? Uh, Royal Rumble. They had one of the Usos bring some guy to K Jewelers to get a ring, and then he proposes to his girlfriend in the ring before the event even starts. Like, they show a video <laughs> of the empty arena, and he's proposing to her. Oh, I don't remember this, but it sounds kind of ridiculous. It's like, well, yeah, all the these people are not terrible, here so. to cheer us on. Yeah. They could have done that on the pre-show when there's all the people there, and they could have gotten like a big raucous yes chant with it. Yeah, because it's like the pre-show sucks anyway. Why not do that? People would be interested. Take five minutes out to do it instead of shut in uh, like another Byron Saxon. What do you think is going to happen in this match? Well, I think that uh, the opposite of what the other three people have said is going to happen. <laughs> uh, so was, you know, something interesting. Laura James, Jerry Ryan getting proposed, uh, or getting proposed, uh, doing the whole engagement thing. I thought it was something interesting to talk about before we get into, like, the actual, like, let's dig deep into pro wrestling shit. Um, so let's get into Hall of Fame. Uh, Godfather's going to be inducted into the 2016 class of the WWE Hall of Fame. And uh, we think that right now the people that are going to induct him are actually Ron Simmons and JBL, which I was a little bit surprised about that to an extent. Ron Simmons makes a little sense to me because the whole nation of domination and whatnot. JBL I didn't quite get, but... Either way, Godfather's a cool character. I think he's justified to be in the Hall of Fame. Anybody have any gripes about it? I, I think it's a bit more of a, a real-life pairing. Like, JBL actually mentioned this when they were talking on commentary about it, that they the three of them were basically road buddies. So oh, the three of them okay. in a car yeah. that traveled all around the country. So they, they have a tight personal bond. So that's why it was both of them and not just one of them. I, he probably, like, JBL was brought in, kind of like, he and Ron Simmons are close, and... uh Charles Wright and Ron Simmons are probably close, so it was sort of like, well, all three of us could all just be buddies, and that's kind of cool. I like that, then. It'll be kind of weird, though, hearing JBL and Duck Godfather, <laughs> you know? 
There's like the clash of their characters is uh, a little bit weird. From what I understand, Charles Wright is actually like a very pinned down dude. Hmm. Like very religious, probably was a Boy Scout, very gentle and kind. So if anything, he clashes with the uh, the Godfather character. Who just leveled up, by the way? That's a good question. I don't know what that was. Someone leveled up. That's what it is. They hit the devil level. <laughs> They're on 78. <laughs> <laughs> well, any other thoughts you guys have on Godfather going into Hall of Fame? I think it's cool. I've good always enjoyed Yeah. Really, it's someone who I never actually thought would be in the Hall of Fame. But, and I definitely never thought he would be the second person they introduced after Sting. So it's a little bit weird in that sense, but... I've always enjoyed The Godfather. Whenever he comes out for the Rumble, it's it's always funny to watch him walk down with the hoe train that they don't. I don't think they actually refer to him as the hoe train anymore. So, good for him. Do you guys think that they're going to reference Papa Shango, or are they going to act like that didn't exist? For oh, our amusement, for our amusement, they better. Yeah, they're going to make a passing joke about it. You know, like JBL or Simmons is going to make a passing joke about it. Because I figured Kama Mustafa and the Supreme Fighting Machine Kama. You know, they'll bring that out because it's easy to transition and be like, yeah, Kama turned into Kama Mustafa, who turned into the Godfather. But it's a lot different when you start going, and he originally was this voodoo priest dude. So I wouldn't be surprised if they keep that out of the video package. Maybe we Barrett comes out and says something, I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's move on then. Uh, Edge and Christian's show that totally reeks of awesomeness it made its debut after Fastlane. So I wanted to get your opinions on these uh, on this show because I hated it, and I, I want to see if I'm the only person who hated it. <laughs> I watched like the first five minutes of it after the pay per view went off the air, and I just couldn't keep watching it. It was I don't know, not my cup of tea. Maybe I'll try it again later, but I did not like what I saw so far. Anybody else watch it? I think I caught a bit of it with the dude. From the WCW era, where all the you know the glitter stormtrooper helmet, yeah, Shockmaster look. I caught that bit, and I thought, "The fuck? Why am I sat here wasting my time? I could be decorating a bedroom." So I went and painted a bedroom. I watched five minutes, and that was all I could really deal with. I thought it was just trash. I was waiting for you guys to tell me if I should watch it or not. So now I should not watch it. <laughs> hey, you guys are such sticks in the mud. You Did fucking you love Edge and Christian for years, and then they finally get their own show, and you're just like, this sucks. Yeah, it's well, nothing different than what they've always done. This is the same Edge and Christian humor they've always had. Yes, nothing but there's a difference the between seeing a, a joke go on for a couple minutes and seeing it go uh -huh. on for a half hour. See, exactly. Edge and Christian are fine in small doses, but the reason I, I love Quagmire in Family Guy, if they made a whole show about Quagmire, I'd probably get tired of it. Yeah, look at Cleveland. And that's why they have all the other people on the show as well. How cool was it seeing Vince McMahon in a comedy sketch like that? It would have been cooler if Vince McMahon do stuff like funny. that. <laughs> 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 it was funny. The whole quip on Christian. That part was funny. I'll That's, admit that. I did like that line. Yeah, that was. It doesn't yeah. make up for the rest of the show. Yeah, there was like there was a couple times where I kind of smiled a little bit, maybe like got a little chuckle, but I mean, I don't like the type of humor of like I don't think it's funny if like somebody's dressed up like a baby. So to have, like, a midget dressed up as a baby or whatever is just kind of like, okay, well, this is the basest, uh, bottom-of-the-barrel type of laughter that you can get out of anybody. And it doesn't even get a smile out of me. So is the midget Dylan? Him just bouncing up and down. Oh. Just like, ah, oh, isn't that funny? Because wouldn't it be funny if we had that? I think I would have appreciated this a lot more if I were, like, 12 or 13, but, Maybe. you know. It kind of gave me a vibe of the Tom Green show. And I never liked that. <laughs> Who the fuck is Tom Green? He's a comedian that is very, like, wouldn't it be funny if I said, like, poopy in my bunghole type of shit? <laughs> and it's like, no, it isn't. Like, the the slap me, uh, spank a donkey and call me Bertha or whatever, I think he says in the, the trailers for this, and it's just like, that's not funny. That's not funny at all, Edge. But they had some ideas where it was like, man, this could be funny. Like, they had a little segment on this called EC Dubs, and it was them dubbing over footage of old ECW. And I was like, oh, man, that's a great title for it, and it could end up being really good, and it ended up just kind of being a bad version of the uh, bad lip reading or bad lip... What, what's it on YouTube? I think it's bad lip reading, right? I don't yep. know. 
uh, but that was just like another thing where it was like, damn, that could have been good. And they had a, a little game that they played in it where they would show a person and you'd have to say what their character was. And it was like Edge was on there, but the answer wasn't Edge. It was Sexton Hardcastle and whatever. And it was like, that could be kind of funny or whatever. So there's some potential to it. But I watched the entire thing and I was just like, no, you know what? I don't think I need to watch this. I would be better off watching Ride right Along. So I don't know. If you guys like it or you didn't like it, leave a comment below or something like that. Tell us what you think. But we're going to continue on with the hot tags here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the confusion that's been happening with Ticketmaster and WWE's plans for different events coming up in the future. Because we had Extreme Rules and Payback have changed. Extreme Rules was set for April 24th and Payback was May 22nd at the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. They changed it now where Extreme Rules is on May 22nd in the same center and Payback was just taken off. Now, Payback is going to be May 1st, but they haven't said exactly what the arena is going to be or anything like that. And no event is on April 24th. So I'm curious about that, but I also want to throw another thing out there and group this in together to get your opinions about both these topics. There was another typo where people went nuts over it. They thought this was this big storyline that got spoiled or whatever. It was uh, some arena had said it to where instead of saying WWE Monday Night Prudential Raw. Center. It's important what the arena is because that's what it's tied to. Which center was it? Prudential Center. <clears throat> For the, the other one that I was talking about, the Monday Night Raw thing? Uh, I thought you were talking about the payback thing. No, no, no. That's a different thing. This was a different center. How many thing. fuck-ups did they make? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. This is a different thing. Decided instead of labeling it WWE Monday Night Raw, they labeled it Monday Night Raw versus WWE. <laughs> and people started what? speculating and going nuts that it was going to be, well, Shane must own uh, Monday Night Raw and Vince is doing WWE against it and whatever like that. And then all they did was go, no, it's a typo, and switch it over. And now everybody's getting like, oh, well, fuck you. It could have been a great story. And it's like, <laughs> it wouldn't have been a story. There was a typo, you idiot. <laughs> like, so we have a typo that makes people think a storyline exists that doesn't exist. And then we got to switch over between payback and extreme rules. What do you guys think about this? I'm going to go person to person here instead of just making it a free range. Peyton, uh, since you mentioned Prudential Center is a big thing when it comes to this, what are your opinions about these topics? It's... It's marketing, as far as the whole thing with the Prudential Center went. I mean, they're, they're going to take care of what they need to do to make ticket sales without lying. The Prudential Center is called The Rock. Now, I don't commonly call it by that because I'm not as local to the Prudential Center as the people who are there. But if you go down to the New York City area, more people would be familiar that they call that The Rock. And as I've asked around more, people knew exactly what I was talking about. And I think the problem is that me being the wrestling-minded person I am, if I hear someone say The Rock, I mean, you could be talking about the movie with Sean Connery. Right. And I'm thinking Dwayne Johnson. You could talk about the stone somewhere. <laughs> Just like, oh, look at that rock. That was totally intentional, though, right? When they said The Rock will be yeah. hosting it. That's what I was just saying. It's marketing. It's yeah, fun. that's ridiculous. So it's the, the, Rock, the Rock is going to host Payback on the same day that The Rock is not going to be at Extreme Rules. <laughs> <laughs> this just makes my head hurt too much. It's so weird, but our, the first thing I guess we can kind of bring up is, do you guys think it's a good idea to switch it to where Payback is following WrestleMania? Kind of makes sense. And yes. Extreme Rules comes afterward. I think so. I think it made more sense. Well, they used to do Backlash after WrestleMania, mm -hmm. and that made sense because it was the Backlash after WrestleMania. Now we were doing Payback. You know, same has that back thing. Payback Lash. Payback uh, so, Lash. That's so after I mean. that, the Ryback will be after WrestleMania. We'll be yeah. fine with that. Yes. I think that was a did you know like two years ago. <laughs> there was uh, there was some I think kayfabe news article or something about Ryback demands back pay for Payback pay per view <laughs> or something. I don't. Know. It sounds right. But no, I think it makes more sense as far as the titles go i mean i'm okay with that and it also it gets a little bit more flexibility because when you've got wwe doing wrestlemania and then a couple weeks later you've got extreme rules a lot of the matches at wrestlemania might be the first time that they're meeting and you want to just go right straight into the gimmick match no you want to build up a little bit more to it so at payback you do the rematches and maybe since uh payback is going to be on may 1st and they haven't set the arena and all that yet Maybe that's going to be more of another WWE Network special instead of a pay-per-view. So it's a little bit of a downgrade, but maybe they can use that to not 
kill off all the WrestleMania feuds, where by the time Extreme Rules comes, holy shit, we've seen this a bunch of different times. No thoughts, anybody? Kennedy. You said you were going person to person. <laughs> no, I, I kind of just threw that one out there. Sorry about that. Uh, well, then, Wego, uh, what do you think about these? Kind of thinking about it, why would people want Shane McMahon to come back and lead an army against the WWE? Didn't that happen once and you all hated it? <laughs> <laughs> just saying. And why is it wrong against it. WWE? I liked it, too. I didn't think so it was I. as bad. I think people just got butthurt because they didn't have the same star power they wanted. But as a feud, it was very, very good. Um, but most people hated it, so I don't know why people are clamoring for it now. Drew, what do you think about these topics? Eh, it would be kind of cool to see something along those lines. It's already been done before, but really, I have no complaints. It's just, if it wasn't a typo, because, you know... If it wasn't a typo, they would say it's a typo for the sake of covering up their original plans. But it's still an interesting thing going forward if that's actually what the plans are for a few months down the road. Any thoughts on the payback Extreme Rules stuff? Well, see, it's not Ryback, so I really don't care as much. But <laughs> I, I like it, I guess. Payback. I, I, don't, I really don't want Extreme Rules. I feel like they should come up with a new name because... Extreme Rules is really no different than TLC because they really have all the same matches for the most part. And speaking of, what's the point of having a Hell in a Cell pay-per-view if you're going to have Hell in a Cell at WrestleMania? Yeah, see, <laughs> that, that's another thing. That's what I don't understand. You, and you just had Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell match a few months prior, so I don't know. I'm, I'm fine with everything, but really, Extreme Rules needs to go. And that's about it. Wasn't everyone complaining that Payback was a terrible name a few years ago? No. Yep. It makes just, sense, but it's still kind of... It's a little bland. I just felt like at some point people... Not us, but just the internet complaining about it. But, oh well. well people I like complain it. no matter what they name it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guarantee you in a couple of weeks people are going to complain that Shane's back. Because that's just going to be the cool thing to do at that point. So oh, no, I've, I've already, already heard people, people complaining. Oh yeah, people are like raging mm -hmm. over the fact that that's the Undertaker's Old. opponent. Yeah, old guy taking up a spot for a young guy that could be wrestling The Undertaker. <laughs> but no one else is built for that, though. I'm fine with Shane. Tell you what, if you want a young guy in that spot, then show me a young guy that can draw money. And doesn't get hurt. <laughs> that's fucking yeah, Shane, true. Shane yeah. Kevin makes... Owens, but that's it. Well, no, Kevin Owens got hurt last year. You can't say that. He didn't get hurt, did he? Yeah, he had a, a knee surgery at one point. It was very minor, but it was still a surgery. Are you sure? I think you made that up. No, I'm no I think he did get hurt. It was uh, he was champion, and it was in between tapings though, so it didn't mm -hmm. mess up. Kind of. I know he got hurt once because CJ Parker came for a fucking punch. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I thought that was well, a kick. That, that happened. No, but no, Drew is right. That happened, but it was luckily that it happened after they fit, kind of like with Finn Balor, where it happened yeah. right after they did a bunch of NXT tapings. Uh, so he had I, like three weeks off. I think this was before he made his main roster debut, so he was probably okay with just that. Oh, okay. Uh, well, Sean, what do you think about the Monday Night Raw versus WWE that we're not getting and the uh, pay-per-view switches? Uh, the pay-per-view switches, I think, are a good idea because I ex I hate Extreme Rules. I hate all the gimmick pay-per-views uh, pay anyways, but Extreme Rules really takes the cake for me. I just fucking hate it. And, uh, and the WWE versus Raw thing, I make typos all the time. <laughs> this is... We know. So... Yeah. yeah, but it's not your job to post things on the website. Yeah, no, but, but, but it is my job to, to do Premiere Pals, which is over on my YouTube. Oh, is that your job now? <laughs> I, I, I get paid. I got paid, 25 cents. Yeah. Suck it, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> well, Caitlin, uh, you talked a little bit about it, but just to round it out, what do you think? Anything else you want to throw in when it comes to these? I mean, anytime there's any kind of little typo or anything out of the ordinary that people are expecting the, the speculation runs rampant so the whole raw versus wwe i think that was blown way out of proportion i'm not expecting that if it does happen though i mean it's interesting we'll see where it goes people will be like i called it i called it <laughs> <laughs> i mean it wouldn't be the first time that they've spoiled things you know upcoming storylines by accidentally promoting you know people and matches that are coming up mm -hmm. so i don't know we'll just see where it goes the pay-per-views any thoughts about that uh i agree that extreme rules probably should be kind of written out it's i don't know it's kind of lost its luster 
And, you know, I feel the same way about TLC. I like the matches when they happen, you know, semi-spontaneously, but when it's forced, I don't like it as much. And like I mentioned before about the payback coming after WrestleMania, that makes more sense to me. I still maintain if Extreme Rules would go, TLC has to go at a time, and so does Hell in a Cell and Night of Champions. Because Extreme Rules to me makes a lot more sense than TLC. Especially because TLC is just... Extreme Rules at least sounds like it could be a name and it's not just a match. Mm -hmm. And it's a label they all see the match, whereas Hell in a Cell and TLC are very obviously matches. So do you guys feel the same way about Survivor Series? That Survivor Series makes sense the way that it is. Again, it's it's another name that can sound like a pay-per-view outside of being just a match. I also don't really think they're Survivor Series matches as much as they are just te- like big te- tag team matches. I mean, at the end of the day, they still call it a six-man tag. Or a eight-man tag or a ten-man tag. So they just call it the Survivor Series because there used to be a series of them. Well, if you're going to be a fucking lame ass about it then you could just say yeah well war games is just a cage match it is just a fucking cage match and it's an <laughs> overrated idea but then with extreme rules like Peyton's saying you can say this gimmick is extreme rules all of them have some kind of an extreme rule or like the royal rumble it's like well that's like a generic like wrestlemania type of kind of name but when you do tlc it's like the whole tlc like the channel where tender loving care no no it means tables ladders and chairs okay well what do you have like a stupid ass chairs match oh yeah but well once we had a stairs match one time and uh what are the rules <laughs> of a tlc match oh well, it's the same as a ladder match but we can use the other stuff can't you use that in a ladder match yeah but this time we book it to them using it <laughs> this is a ridiculous pay-per-view uh and like hell in a cell if we're doing hell in a cell at wrestlemania this year we don't need hell in a cell as a pay-per-view and if you really really want to do hell in a cell later on in the year you can do it but don't make it like multiple Hell in a Cell matches or anything like that. Just wait until you get to a point where somebody needs the Hell in a Cell. Well, to be fair, they've done a really good job about booking around that Hell in a Cell pay-per-view the last couple of years. Past, like, two, three years. Before that, when it was, like, 2009 or so, and it was just kind of like, I guess these two are few years. Yeah. So <laughs> to have, to have Sheamus and fucking Big Show or whoever. I think it was Sheamus, Sheamus and Del Rio. Sh- I think there was Mark Henry and Randy Orton. I know we've oh. had... Uh, what else was there? There was did CM Punk versus Ryback two years in Twice. a row. Don't, yeah. don't forget that. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Ugh. So, yeah, if you get to a point where later on, maybe like... I was just throwing a random idea out there. Maybe either Roman Reigns or Dean Ambrose is heel towards the end of the year, and they've been feuding with each other. Those two can have a Hell in a Cell match. But you can put it on Survivor Series, or you can put it on Night of Champions or something like that. You know what I mean? You don't need the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. And if you do, okay. If you don't, no big deal. I'm a very, I'm a big advocate that if they want to make Survivor Series have a gimmick now, make sure make it the Elimination Chamber. It's perfect for the Survivor Series. It's all about surviving. Hmm. Possibly. Uh, last hot tag for us for this episode: the Bullet Club has had a lot of different speculation about what they're going to be called in WWE because they might not necessarily be able to use the Bullet Club name. I would assume that they wouldn't be able to because they probably wouldn't have the rights to it. A lot of people thought it was just going to be the Balor Club because he started it like that and they've done the whole Balor Club thing already. Now the speculation, though, is that they're going to be called Bulletproof. So what do you guys think about this? Is the stable name Bulletproof something good? Is it a decent alternative or should they scrap that and think of something else? Leave it up to everybody to just tag in. Originality never hurts. That's really all I can say about that. Yeah. So are you saying that Bulletproof lacks originality or does have originality? No, it lacks it. I mean, the whole idea that you're just trying to do Bullet Club in WWE lacks originality. I agree. Yeah, it seems kind of lame that they're just twisting it enough to be able to legally use the name, but they're still trying to cash in on that. So I don't know. I'm. I'll have to wait and see what's what they're going to do with it. But right now, it sounds kind of lame. So I'm not too opposed to it. I mean, I could probably have like some better options out there. But if they came in uh, with Anderson and Gallows, if they came in as like, well, we call ourselves Bulletproof, and it wasn't the big stable name, I'd be cool with that. Instead of just calling them Anderson and Gallows. I hate when they do that with tag teams. Give them a tag name, you know? Let them have gear that looks like it's got little bullet holes in it or something, you know? I'd be alright with that. 
Any other pro or con opinions? It's fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with Wigo. Any particular reasons? Just don't it's, like it? I just don't like the name. Bulletproof? Really lazy. Sounds like a shitty, like, pop boy band. It reminds me of that song by LaRue. Yeah, Bulletproof! As long as that's their theme, I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah, if it's their theme, yeah, I'll, I'll be down for that, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, well, those are the hot tags for episode 222. Make sure you leave your comments below, tell us what you think about all these topics, and if there's anything else that we forgot about, toss that in the comments as well, and we'll try to chime in with our opinions. But we need to take a break right now with the rest hold in part three. Afterward, in part four, we're going to come back with the mailbag questions for February. <laughs>